Welcome back to a brand new game. Today we're going to make this game and it's going to be a full tutorial uh, for Armour 3D and I'm, my voice is a bit bleh, dry because I've already done this video once and I forgot to enable audio so I've been talking to myself this whole time and none of it mattered so I'm a bit pissed off. So <laughs> let's go ahead and add in a UV sphere again and add in another circle and scale it up. Uh, uh, no, we're not scaling up. Ah. Yes, yeah, scale it up and rotate it 90 degrees. What's going on? Rotate 90 degrees. There we go. Now we have something that looks alike. Now we want to extrude this stuff and add some thickness to it. Uh, there we go. Something nice and thick. And we can also select everything, extrude it on the Y axis to give it some more thickness. And we can go ahead and resize the player to be something interesting. We can obviously apply the scale and rotation and we can add a modifier, so the division surface modifier for this guy uh, to make sure that we have everything smoothed out. So let's go ahead and add X-ray mode, go into UV editing uh, and P to separate out all these different pieces. Now what we want to do is we want to add two different pieces to this guy. We want to have a black and a white piece. So let's go ahead and add a white color which is going to be white and we're going to add in a black color so let's call this one black and this one is going to obviously be black now our player I think should be white at the start because uh, that's just what I did previously and add this one to be black so now we have two pieces one white one black and this player can become both white or black so let's go ahead and add some physics. Let's go to the rigid body, add a passive animated and set it to sphere. The reason we're doing animated is because we're going to move up and down and up and down and around and around. And let's go ahead and add a rigid body to this guy. Let's call it passive animated and add in a mesh. The reason we're doing mesh is because the origin is in the center. And since we're rotating around, uh, we want our object to have uh, to register collisions on the actual vertices not on an estimated uh, crappy collision thing like that. If we do convex hull, for example, it's going to estimate that all this should be uh, where the collision happens. So all this about there would be collisions. That's not what we want. We want to actually traverse this entire environment here without triggering a collision. So we have to use mesh. So it actually uses the individual vertices. And we can do the exact same thing for the uh, black uh, ring. And now we have pretty much set up our entire game environment. So we can go ahead and focus our camera uh, to something interesting. It's something like this that should look good. Right, now what we want to do is want to rotate this around and around and around and around. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in a army trait. Add in a node tree. Let's call this node tree ring because it's a ring obviously and let's turn this down let's remove all these let's just go to the shading workspace turn this guy up remove this guy turn this guy into another guy and turn that guy on now we can go ahead and start working on this guy so we want to do a float, we want to add a property, a variable, I've made a whole video about variables, I'm not about to do it again. Let's go ahead to ring, uh, I mean call it ring, our variable is going to be ring, I'll link the link to the uh, variable the video in the description on the Army 3D community channel. I don't know if you guys already know, I assumed you did but apparently not. There is a whole new Army 3D community channel where it's going to be the central hub for all Army 3D related content. I'm just posting this video here because it's a full game tutorial instead of just a feature explanation, which is what I'm doing on the community channel. So let's go ahead and get the property, get the object's property, and the object is obviously this guy, and the property is ring. And what we want to do is want to rotate this ring guy. So let's go ahead and get an on update node so we can uh, update the, the rotation every single frame. And we need to grab a, a rotate object node. Now this rotate object node isn't going to be filled in with an eyedrop or we're not going to select the object we're going to um, rotate because we need to select, we need to make sure both of these objects have the ring node uh, tree so they both use this uh, node tree to uh, rotate. So what we want to do now is we want to somehow t convert this rotation into an individual axis. So let's go ahead and get the rotation uh, rotation node. 
and we can plug the rotation data in here and now we get access access to the axes but we only want to deal with the single axes because r y rotates the objects in the in the desired uh, axes so we need to go ahead and get the vector node and this vector node over here is going to give us access to the y and now we can plug in our variable which is currently at a value of zero so we can set that to one i guess but one thing we need to do is also multiply it by delta time because obviously uh, different devices have different frame rates and if you don't multiply it by delta time then uh, it will have different speeds on different devices because every device has its own, well not every device, but a lot of devices have their own frame rates like 24, 100, 200 depending on how crazy of a machine, machine you're using but if we're updating this 200 times a frame it will move a hell of a lot quicker than, we're update, than if we're updating it 24 or 60 times a second so obviously this is a very important step when doing movement inside of Armory 3D and any other game engine by that by the way. So we can uh, add a little uh, co um, name to it. We can call this uh, uh, Rotate Rings and give it a color of, yeah, that. That's fine. Okay, we have a ring rotation system going on here. And what we want to do is we actually want to go to the render path, go add a 2D bait, uh, because we want this to be a flat sort of 2D to start game, even though we're in 3D. Uh, let's go ahead, add a sort of green envi uh, green um, background color. And now we can play this, and you should be able to see we have a rotation going on. Uh, it's not the right rotation that we want, but it's a rotation. Uh, obviously we need to plug it into the Z axis obviously uh, I'm not sure exactly why that does uh, yes uh, yes right yes because blender uses the Z axis for the top and yeah okay anyway plug it into the Z and now we have the right movement going on here however you can see it's rather jagged on the edges I don't know if you can see with the YouTube compression but it is very jagged so let's add some anti-aliasing now if you've just seen the video that I made about post-processing then you know exactly what we need to do anti-aliasing go down to TAA maybe or SMAA I think might be the best option Yeah, now it's much smoother and much uh, crisper going on here. So let's go ahead now and add in some player movement. So let's go to our player and add in a new node tree. We're going to call this one player and we're going to add a bunch of crazy stuff. Uh, player. So let's add a variable, a float for that matter. And we're going to call this SPD for speed. Speed lightning. Let's call that one, well, let's add it to one, I mean. And let's go ahead and add an update node so we can update our stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a translate node because our goal here is to move the player. So we have to translate it up and down. And it's the player that we want. So what we need to do is we need to separate out these vectors because we only need to uh, move it on the um, Z axis. So let's go ahead and get the property of our speed right here. So the property is hosted inside the uh, player object. We can actually just rename that to player to avoid any problems. Rename this to black and uh, leave uh, rename this one to white. So our player has a value currently of oops uh, currently of one. So one is going to be added to x uh, to z every frame and obviously since we're doing a movement you need to multiply it by delta time because if not you're going to have a very fast or very slow moving player depending on your device application time get the delta value plug it in and there we go we have everything going perfectly fine so what we need to do now is play this to make sure everything's working and if it does, then our player should be moving up, up, and away, as you can see. However, our rings are not rotating. The reason being, I don't know. Why aren't our rings rotating? So we have a ring. What's the variable ring? One. 
Why is our ring not rotating? I don't know. Let's go over to here and play it again. It appears that we have an issue, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, no, it was just a glitch. I just cleared the cache and it was fine. Just a weird uh, issue. Never had that one before. Probably never will again. Uh, just a cache problem. And let's go back to our player. What we need to do now is we need to make sure we can change our player's color. So let's go ahead and group this up and call it uh, move player. This, oh, that's not move. Move player. And what we need to do now is uh, actually be able to control our player's color. So we need to m get the mouse input. We can get the mouse started input. So as soon as you click the right mouse button, we need to set the material of the object. No, that's not what we want. We need to uh, get the material node. Uh, there we go. And we need to get the uh, set object material. There we go. These are the two nodes that we need. So the material we want is black because currently it's white. And the object is obviously the player. So once we have this in place, you will be able to see that when we click, our player becomes black. Now, how do you revert it back to white? Well, I made a video about randomness, and in that video, I talked about alternate outputs. So if you plug this mouse into an alternate output node, we can alternate. Uh, the first time we click, it's going to input this value, and then when we click again, it's going to uh, not input this value. It's going to input. It's going to activate this action and then the next time we click it's going to activate the second action third fourth fifth however many actions you add onto it so the second action that we want to add on here is to change the object back to white and there we go now we have the whole thing the whole kit caboodle set up and ready to rock yay uh, it's working However, we have no collisions. What if we collide? We're just going to fall and fly away. So we can group this up. Uh, call it Colors Switch. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to change, uh, to change direction based on our player's collisions. So let's go ahead and add a on contact node. Because we have two objects that two possibilities for the object. If it's white and it collides with a white object, it's just going to bounce and then come back down. If it's black and bounces on the black one, it's going to just bounce back up. If it's white and it hits the black, oh, you're going to die. You can't do that. <laughs> you have to keep the color uniform, uniformity. Let's go ahead and add uh, these two on contact nodes uh, one with the player on the white, one with the player on the black. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and check when the player is colliding. Oh, yeah, we already have these four when the player is colliding. But if the player is white or black, we need to figure out what color the player is at the time of the collision. So to do that, we're actually going to use a boolean because, you know, it's, why not? Let's add the boolean. Uh, call this one color. And if it's black, then it will be checked. If it's white, it's unchecked. So what we want to do here on our mouse here is we want to go ahead and set the property. Uh, no, that's not a set property node. We need to get a set property node. Set property node and the property is obviously going to be the color that we just made. Color. And the value is going to be a boolean set to checked because checked means black and this node tree adds the color to black. Uh, so checked and if it's uh, white then we need to do the exact same thing except unchecked because unchecked is white uh, for us I mean if you want to do the inverse you can do the inverse but whatever now we want to go ahead and get the property of our object the property is going to be obviously the boolean that we just created called color and this color is going to be uh, map it's going to be checked so we need to get a thing that checks our boolean, a branch. And it's going to branch off either yes or no. Other way around, but it doesn't matter. And plug in the value. So if this is checked, it's going to do something. And if it isn't, it's going to do something as well. 
So what we want to do is plug in these two things here. So if it is black, if the player is, uh, if it's checked as in true, and it's uh, the player is black, then it's good. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add in a uh, not destroy a remove player. Okay, we want to remove the um, the player if we collide with the object when we're not supposed to. Uh, so if it's true and if it's false. So we want to remove the player in those situations. So you see we're white and we're going to collide with the black. Oh no, it's the wrong way around. If it's true and if it's, yeah, that should be the right thing. So let's test it out to make sure everything's working. So if our object is white and it collides with the black, it dies. And if it is black and collides with the white, it lives. So that's what you want to do. And now we need to actually go ahead and add in a something to uh, to do when it is true, when the object is colliding with its own color. Well, to do that, we need to go ahead and get the property of our object, because what we want to do is obviously modify its uh, uh, direction. Instead of going up, it's going to go down. So we're going to get the object's property. The property is um, speed, I think. Let's see. Uh, speed, yeah, that was right. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a math to it and plug in the math, set it to multiply minus one, uh, because obviously if one times minus one equals minus one, then minus one times minus one equals positive one. So if you're up, it's going to send you down. And if you're down, it's going to send you up. Because if, for example, if we're going up, we collide with something that says go to minus one and it goes down and it collides with it, it's still using the same logic node. So if we're down, and it says, uh, fine, go back up again. It's not actually going to say it. It's going to say go to minus one, but we're already at minus one, so we're going to go even further down. So we need a way to modify, to juggle going up and going down, and that is the perfect way to do it, because minus one, whether it be four minus one or four positive one, it always equals the, the, uh, the negative value of it, because minus and minus is positive, obviously. So we're going to set the property of the object to be the negative, the opposite of what it was previously. And we're gonna plug that in. Okay, we can just shut these guys down. They're using too much room. And bring them along. And so what we need to do is get the object's property and define that the variable we want to modify is a speed variable. And that is all we need to do. Now we can obviously modify, duplicate it and put it over here. And there we go. Now when we are on the uh, when we're colliding the same color that we are now when we're now when we're colliding with the same color that we are then we are actually going to bounce boing there we go a bounce that is so great it makes everyone jealous and now if we're white and we collide with the black then we die so we have our game mechanic pretty much set up at this point you know so let's go ahead and call this uh collision or I know boom that sounds better boom a big bright fiery color so once we have our boom set up we can go ahead and what do we need to do we have pretty much everything done apart from restarting the scene restarting the level so over here we have two uh, options we can either remove a bouncy object obviously to keep playing or we can kill the object but if we kill the object it's going to just float on forever so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a merge node because once we have these two um, uh, destroy object uh, nodes it's going to destroy our object so our node tree is no longer be going to be activated so one last thing you need to do if we just leave it empty, then it will cut off at that. But if we add something to it, it won't actually destroy the node tree right now. It will destroy the object, but it will still run this node script tree, node tree. So what we need to do is we need to merge these two values uh, so that they give the same output. So we don't need to duplicate what we're about to do now. 
which is add a sleep node because once you kill the object you'll get rather tired so you need to sleep for a little bit so add it to one so what this does is that it just freezes uh, the 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 execution of this node tree because it's obviously in linear fashion it follows down the line destroys the objects and merges uh, these two functions uh, these two events together and they both will execute the same thing which is just wait a second and then do whatever I add here and what I'm gonna add is to set the scene the set the active scene to be the scene that we're already active on uh, get active scene so we're just gonna restart the level essentially and if we play this and save it as well we can go ahead and you can see that our whole game is really coming to life now we have our ball that goes up and bounces on the wall if we're black then we got then we die and then we restart the scene okay so what we want to do now is actually uh, separate out these objects a little bit uh, I'm gonna add to 3d cursor and scale them slightly uh, no I'm gonna actually move them down slightly uh, because they're a bit overlapping there so they have a small gap actually the gaps a little too small too big There, so that looks uh, a little bit more decent. And now when we play this, you can see that our whole game is really starting to come together and we don't have such a, a gaping gap. And we still do on the edges, I think. So what we want to do is understand why that is happening. So we can go ahead and apply these uh, things, hit these um, modifiers, and we can go ahead and add a new uh, no. We can go ahead and play this again to see if that solved the issue. And uh, and it obviously did. There you go. Now, and we can go ahead and apply those modifiers. And let's also go ahead to our camera view and set this to all for graphics. So we don't actually need the perspective mode. It's just uh, a, a waste. So let's go ahead and zoom out a bit and now we can go ahead and play this and you can see that the game is really starting to come together so one obviously we do have a few more things to do for example a score system uh, but for right now it's looking pretty good Let's apply the, the scale of the object uh, because they are sort of overlapping over here. There we go. Now we have our situation uh, greatly improved. So we can go ahead and you can see that uh, over here we need to do a few more things. So now that we have our, our score, uh, our speed reversed I mean and we have also our restart mechanics set up we actually need to go ahead and do one more thing and that is to actually um, well figure out what we're gonna do what, what what's the point of playing this game so the point is to make uh, the best score possible so we're gonna go ahead and add an on render 2d node I talked about the render 2D draw nodes uh, in a ARM 3D community channel video, so you can go check that out. Link in the description once again. So we can draw a string. Uh, no, that's not what we want. We want to draw a string, and this string uh, requires a font. So let's go ahead to our project folder, open up our font folder. We can create a new uh, folder to add the font. It needs to be called bundled exactly as I spelt it and we need to go ahead to our uh, Windows I think yeah fonts and just grab any old font that you want uh, let's go ahead and get this guy here control C go back to our no go back to uh, where we were in the bundled folder and paste it now we can rename it to be easier to reference we can call this font and now we can reference it font dot ttf 
that's the font format and we can give it a text of one to three and a color of orangey i guess we can also give the y something like 20 and the x something like 10 so it's not so close to the borders because zero is obviously on the top right onto the corner here and we're just adding 10 pixels on the x and moving it along a little bit and 20 pixels down so now we should have one two three uh rather small because we're only 16 pixel uh font size is only 16. so we have a rather small thing going on here let's augment it to like 75 so way bigger so we can actually see it and start the start it again and here you go you can see now we have a much bigger font size it's a bit bold uh but uh yeah it's pretty good so let's also move it across 30 maybe yeah something further away from the side now we actually need to get a a uh, score variable so let's go to our player go down here to our score add a float can call this score and set it to zero by default, which is good. So what we want to do is set a score. No, well, no. Get the property of our player. The property is going to be score. And plug in that property up here. And now the property is going to say zero. So what we want to do now is to increment that property every time we say bounce. So what we're going to do is we are going to add another merge node <laughs> so this one we're going to merge the um uh the set property node so let's go ahead and merge these two values because that's the last thing we do after bouncing and the last thing we do is going to be now adding the score so let's go ahead and increment the score so we need to get the property of the object we need to get the old score and we need to add to it so we're going to get the score named uh, get the property named score and add a math node to mod to uh, uh, add and we need to uh, set the property back to score so we're getting score which currently equals 0 we're adding 1 and then we're setting that value to the score so it will become 1 so, uh, and obviously if we're 2, then it'll become 3, 3, 4, exactly uh, like a normal score should. So there we go. Now we have an entire game, essentially, an entire uh, score system set up. And we have our player working fine. And we have our score. There is some weird glitchy thing going on here. I don't know what that is. I've never had that before. Uh, so let's go ahead and change our... MMA to uh, FX MA to uh, modify the anti aliasing to remove that artifact and glitch situation going on there. And as you can see, it's still there. So, so one thing we can do is we can actually go ahead and rotate this guy. Hang on, let's go ahead here rotate ah, I see the problem you see the glitching is because our objects aren't actually in the center let's go ahead to the objects to set the origin to the 3d cursor because the 3d cursor is in the uh, world origin and that will get rid of that ugly sort of creasing of the edges because they weren't actually uh, at the right origin so they're rotating sort of squiffy on an angle and there we go now we don't have that weird overlapping situation going on and we have our score system and our, our player restarts however the player is very slow and uh, let's go ahead and modify that right now let's go back to the shading where we have our logic node set up and every single uh, every single uh, yeah let's uh, modify our player's speed to be something like three there we go and now we have everything set up properly as we would want it. The only thing that really can be modified is the score system, I guess. And uh, to make it more uh, nice, I guess. Uh, but one, no, what, what am I talking about? There's a lot more things to talk about. Uh, for example, our object here, we never need to really play because 
it's a repetitive thing. We need to add unpredictability to do it. So let's go ahead to our ring and add in some unpredictability and by that I mean randomness. We made an entire video about randomness so what we need to do is since our entire rotation here it sets the object's rotation, separates out the rotation, adds us a vector, multiplies by delta time and finally adds the value, the value being, uh, what was the value being again, 1? Yeah, 1. So since this is all driven by 1, we can just modify this and this entire thing will work properly. So let's go ahead and set, oh, we already got one. We're going to get the property of our, what was it called, ring. We're going to get the property of, not wrong, ring. Yeah, ring. There. Once we've got ring, we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, we're going to um, multiply it. No, we're going to... No, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to set the ring. Set property. We're going to get the property of our ring here. We're going to get his uh, variable name, which is ring. And what we need to do is every so often, as an on timer, we talked about the randomness in, the, in a previous Armour 3D community video. So that will come in handy here. Let's go ahead and make a random float. And the random float will mean every second or five seconds depending every one two three four or even five seconds it's going to modify this uh, speed property to be anything we want so let's go ahead and add a random well random float once again and add in something like minus four and positive four so any value between minus four and positive four is going to be used now that also means that we're going to not only move it forwards also counterclockwise so it can move in any direction positive 4 or minus 4 you can see here we're moving and it adds unpredictability to it so it makes it insanely insanely hard to predict because you can't not even the computer really knows what's really going on until it happens so yeah that is a, a really interesting game and it's completely set up the score system is a bit small and low so we can modify that later uh, or now <laughs> uh, add 20 maybe Set it to a bluer color, I guess. That might fit better. And uh, we can go ahead and change the font because it's kind of an ugly font. And move it forwards, uh, down maybe 50. Forwards maybe uh, 100 pixels. Oh, no, 70. 70 pixels. So once we have that set up, we can go ahead and play this. And you can see we have a pretty good game uh, set up here. I'm not going to talk about uh, setting a score system. I've done a video recently. You can go check out how to do variables with my community channel. You can go ahead and support me on the community channel. You can't give me money yet because uh, I don't. You can go ahead and support me on the, my community channel by going and helping me either by adding what tutorial you want to see to the list or making your own tutorials. And if you don't want to do that or you can't do that or you're scared of doing that, then you can actually just send me your blend files related to that subject. So I don't need to actually figure out or not figure out, but make videos about the, the, the subject and also make the blend files to, to, to illustrate it. If you send me the blend files, that's half my work already done. So I can make twice the amount of videos I'm currently doing now. So... I really need your help, I would really love for you to help and uh, I have set up a lot of things to help co the community and I'm asking for your help to help me shine the light for Armoury whose future is very bright and we need more torch bearers to, to show us the way. <laughs> okay, see ya.